It's extremely difficult to see where this ends and what it means for the global economy. Yes, it's hard, and you have to think about scenarios. I would say the baseline scenario is one in which uh, Israel uh, occupies Gaza, it's going to get ugly, but the conflict remains uh, contained to there. And therefore, the markets so far are essentially pricing this one as being the baseline. That's why oil prices have not done very much, because there is not really a threat to the supply of oil in the Gulf. There was a little bit of a risk off uh, with impacts on bond yields and on gold and so on. But even markets, uh, equity markets have recovered because there are other economic use, like maybe the Fed staying on hold rather than hiking again, that are positive. But of course, there is a downside scenario in which uh, Israel tried to destroy Hamas, Iran, that is a major back of Hamas decides to unleash Hezbollah in Lebanon and then you have a second front in Lebanon, maybe a third one in the West Bank. And at that point, Israel will have to attack Iran. If that were to be the case, of course, then the supply of oil from the Gulf gets, uh, to say, disrupted. And then you could have a spike in oil prices, and then the economic impact will be huge. I mean, in 73, we had the Yom Kippur War. In 79, with the Iranian Revolution, there was an oil shock that then led to stagflation all over the world. But it's not the baseline scenario, but it's a risk. But it's a risk. I don't know how, the probability of that risk, or whether we should even be talking about probabilities. Are we talking 10%, 30%? or do we just not know? Uh, the honest answer, uh, we, we don't know. Uh, different people may have different assessment. I would say that uh, certainly the baseline probably will be at least a two-third probability that uh, the conflict remains contained to Gaza, whether then it's a 20 or 30 or 35 percent probability of something escalating. The honest answer is nobody knows exactly. But the market seems to be discounting the possibility of a massive conflict throughout the Middle East for now. But if oil goes to even 120 and a half, or 130, let's say, how, how problematic is that for central banks and the world economy? Well, it's problematic in two ways, because higher oil prices implies that uh, most economies go into a slowdown of growth or a recession, and then there's a rise in inflation. Mm -hmm. It's a stagflationary shock, and then becomes a huge dilemma for central banks, because either there's raise rates to try to fight that inflation, and then you have a more severe economic contraction, yeah. or if you decide that you care more about growth, and then you don't raise rates, then you have the anchoring of inflation expectation, like it happened in the 70s. So whenever you have a negative supply shock, this stagflation then becomes a real dilemma for central banks. And we don't know how they're going to be answering to this shock. It's also like there's there's just a global sadness, right? A lot of people are, are speaking out. I don't know whether this impacts spending. I think that actually it impacts, first of all, uh, business confidence, especially in Europe where economic activity is effectively contracting, has been contracting for a number of quarters. I would say that if you are any business, uh, there's an option value of waiting if you have to decide how many more workers to hire, where to do more capex. And there's been a slowdown, for example, in employment growth in the Eurozone yeah. uh, so far. The economic contraction, the GDP production side has been more severe. So this could be actually a tipping point where firms decide, I have no idea whether this conflict is going to spread or not. Let me wait and see. I'm not going to hire anymore. I'm going to stop some of the capex. And that could become self-fulfilling and imply that the Eurozone is already borderline into recession. Same thing with the UK going to an actual recession. So yeah. even the probability of something bad happening affects through uncertainty decisions of the business sector and maybe yeah. not consumer. Consumer may slow down consumption as well. No, no, really, how critical are the next couple of days or weeks? So if we have boots on the ground in Gaza from Israel, could, could this, is this an escalation point that could actually happen quite quickly? Well, I think that most people expect that Israel at this point has no choice but go into Gaza and get rid of Hamas uh, forever. And they didn't do it in the past. It's going to be painful. It's going but to be would ugly. Be a strong escalation, right? Uh, it it really an escalation, but I believe that the markets are already pricing in that Israel has no choice but going into Gaza. The question is going to be once they go into Gaza, whether then skirmishes that are occurring in the north become more severe, whether Hezbollah in Israel start a real war, mm -hmm. and therefore that there'll be a hand of Iran directly that happening, and then the conflict will become regional as opposed to being limited to Gaza. Then the markets are yeah. pricing in that something ugly is going to happen in Gaza, unfortunately, and there's no other choice. So they're not worried as much about that, but about whether there's going to be an escalation.